Hallelujah. This is good. Devils are praying now. Yes. Glory be to God. You know, I just want to feel relaxed because something's going to happen this morning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you are we ready for the word of God? Yes. Amen. This morning, I want you to know where you are. You are in every gas station. Where God is going to fill you with fresh oil. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say, I know where I am. I know where I am. We are here to be filled. Hallelujah. With good, good, good blessing. Okay, let's open our Bible to the book of uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew 25. It's good to see uh, Sister Ola for a, a long time now. I've not seen her for two months now. <laughs> the last time I came, she decided to say, I want to rest. She didn't come to church. Amen. The Lord is your strength. Amen. Amen. Okay, are we there? Okay. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps. Everyone shout lamps. So you have something in you. Hallelujah. A virgin talks about people that have been sanctified. Hallelujah. You know, they took their lamps. We are all virgin in the presence of God. We look fresh. We are clean. You know, no corruption inside of us. Obviously, there is no corruption, there is no corruption. inside of me. Amen. 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 So, who took their lamps and they went out to meet the bridegroom? Now, five of them were wise and five were foolish. And I know the category of those people who where you belong to. You are among those five people that are wise. Amen. Somebody say, I'm full of wisdom. Full of wisdom. <laughs> Verse 3. Those who are foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. So oil signifies wisdom. Amen. Amen. So from this scripture, if you have oil in your life, it means you are wise. Fresh oil makes you wise. It gives you wisdom. But, verse 4, but the wise took oil in their what? Verses. Somebody shout verses. With their lamp. With their lamp. Amen. Amen. So let's open our Bible to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 7. We're going to look at scripture and I believe God is going to help us to match this scripture together. 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 7. The Bible says, But we have this what treasure. That treasure is the oil. Hallelujah. He said, We have this treasure. In the 18 verses. Hallelujah. You will see the wise people they took the oil. Oil signifies treasure. You will see the oil. If you have oil in your life, and you know, look at people working there offshore. What, what are they going to do to go and look for oil? When, when they have oil, a company that a country that you know generates oil is one of the richest countries in the whole world. If you look at it. Hallelujah. There is oil inside of you. Inside your vessel. And one of the places they put, they put the oil is on the vessels. Amen. So you will see, the Bible says the wise one, they put what? The oil inside their own vessel. Amen. So the Bible says we have this treasure in the earthly vessel that the excellency of power might be of God and not of us. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Are we getting the scripture? Is it making sense now? Okay, let's go to the book of Second, Second Kings chapter 4. 
2 Kings chapter 4. Okay, I'm going to start from verse 1. This is real. This is um, a case study. It's a life. What happened to somebody? The Bible says a certain woman of the wife of the sons of the prophet cried out to Elijah and said, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared God. He's a virgin. You know. He, he respects you. But the creditor is come to take my two sons to be slave, to be his slave. So the Elijah said to her, ah, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? Somebody say, What do you have in the house? What do you have in the house? Amen. Amen. And she said, Your male servant has nothing in the house. But a jar of oil. And that's same verse 3. You will see, whenever you see oil, you will see a vessel. Amen. And the servant said, Go and borrow vessels because you have oil in the house. Go and borrow vessels. Amen. Amen. So, whenever there is oil, there should be a vessel. With you. Amen. Amen. God pour oil on the vessel. Okay. So this one will now bring us to another scripture. You know. So let me let's finish this one. The Bible says, then he said, Go borrow vessels from what? Everywhere. From everywhere. Everywhere. From all your neighbors. Empty vessels. Because God is about to do something. Hallelujah. What area of your life can signify vessels? Your ex life can be a vessel. I want to pour oil upon your body. Amen. You know, is it your finances, your account? It's a vessel. I want to pour oil upon it. Amen. Is it your career? I want to pour oil upon it. So go and borrow a vessel. Go and borrow a vessel. Everywhere. Is it your children? They are vessels in the hand of God. I want to pour oil upon them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Bible says in verse 4, and when she has come in, she shut the door behind you. The shut the door, you shall shut the door behind you. And your sons then pour it into those vessels. Hallelujah. Amen. So God is looking for vessels that is going to pour himself upon. Them. And the Bible says, pour it. Pour it into those verses and set aside the full one. Somebody shall be full one. You know, and that is what people don't experience. The fullness of the anointing. The fullness of the anointing are the one that has set apart. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I will shall be set apart. Amen. So, so we don't wait till we are full and we just got go, to go out. That's what happened to the foolish one. It's not that they don't have a vessel or they have, they have a lamp. And you understand? So they are not, they didn't, in their lamp, you will see their lamp was burning at initial stage. Am I correct? Yeah. But the lamp go out, the light on the lamp goes out because they are Vast who are not full of oil. The Bible says, So she went from him and shut the door behind her and so on. Who brought the vases unto her? And she poured oil. Who brought? Who are the people that brought it? The children. They went out. We need to go out. Hallelujah. And bring the vases. We need to try something and bring the verses. Go and borrow it. And the Bible says they were and they, 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 they were filled and she poured it out of the verse 8, the verse 6. Now it came to pass. When the verses were full, when the verses were full, that she said to her son, bring me another verse. And he said to her, there is no another verse. 
The oil will have not stopped, but they didn't present themselves as a vessel. The foolish version didn't present themselves as a vessel. Hallelujah. They have love, but they didn't present themselves as a vessel. So today, that's what we're going to do. We will present ourselves as a vessel in the name of Jesus. Okay, let's go to the book of Second, Second Timothy, chapter 2, verse 20. Second Timothy, chapter 2, verse 20. I'm not here to teach, I'm here to receive. Hallelujah. Verse 20. The Bible says, But in a great house, there are not only verses of gold. Are you getting it? And of silver. Don't say you are not important. There are different types of verses. But the verses, you know, quality can change. As a result of what you receive. Amen. Amen. But also of good and of clay. For some for honor and some for dishonor. It doesn't matter where how you came. Nobody can at the moment, maybe people don't honor you. You are a vassal in the house of God. You don't seem to as if you carry honor, but it doesn't matter. But it's gonna change from today. Amen. Amen. Some might be honored. It doesn't matter. You see people that God is using. You see, God is not using you. But today's story is going to change. If you can meet the requirements. He now says in verse 21, If anyone, it doesn't matter whether they are persons of gold or silver, they are persons of wood or clay, they are for honor or dishonor. It doesn't matter. What matters is if anyone Cleansing itself from the latter. It will be. Somebody say, I will be. I will be. What you, you are going to become is one matter. Hallelujah. By the outpouring of fresh oil, what you shall become is what matter. It's not what you look like now. The Bible says, It will be. You know, it was said, Some are for dishonor. But now say, if you decided that I'm going to pay the price of cleansing myself, it's automatically, it will be. You might look like a clay, you might look like a wood, you might look as if you are not significant. But if you decided that I want to be a vessel of honor and you cleanse yourself, new oil is going to come upon you. If anyone claims himself, he will be a vassal of honor, a vassal for honor, sanctified and useful for the master. Prepare for every good work. Hallelujah. Today is all about the outpouring of fresh oil upon the fresh vassal. And I see God is about to release. He said, Where is the? He said, Bring me a vessel. He said, No, there is no. I can't. God said, Look, I don't pour my you know, anointing upon anybody. I put my anointing upon those who have vessel. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Those who are ready for my spirit. We have been hearing a lot of teaching, we have had a lot of things. But how many people are God is using? Why? Because they could not pay the price of sanctifying themselves. They could not sanctify themselves. To be sincere, we all have kitchens, we all have verses, intensives at home. Am I right? Yes. If you have the best vessel that you use, and it's, you use it and you don't clean it, will you use it again? You will prefer to use even you know, uh, the breakables. Hallelujah. That are clean. We went to a restaurant a few days ago and they have a cutlery. You say, oh, one of uh, the, the people that we were there together said, don't use the cutlery. It might not be clean. Let's go and get breakables. Hallelujah. 
You know, they are not sure. God is not sure about your sanctification. If God is not sure about your sanctification, He will not use you. Because the anointing that is coming is fresh. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody says fresh. Fresh, fresh. So that you can be you can encounter God. If you are not fresh, if the anointing that is coming upon you come upon something that is stale, it's going to remain stale. But we say God cannot put a new wine in the old wine skin. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be your sanctuary. Pure and holy, try and true, with and sin, how we are I want you to pour out your fresh anointing. I know you don't pour your fresh anointing on the, upon anybody but those verses that make themselves ready. I'm telling you, God is looking for you. He wants to use you all over the world. Hallelujah. Amen. But can you prepare yourself? Hallelujah. Can we prepare ourselves for the great? He's looking for a revivalist. He's looking for, you know, an evangelist. He's looking for people who's going to send order to the palace. A vassal of honor. The people will see you and just say, ah, oh, this is a vassal of honor. For honor, for honor. God doesn't want you to be disgraced. We face a lot of disappointments. We don't know why, because we have not prepared, sir. Fresh oil has not come upon us. Fresh oil has not come upon us. There is a lot of contamination in our system. It needs to be purged so that the fresh oil can come. Because things are going to happen that we don't expect. It takes those people who have extra oil in them to go far. So many people give up on the road, on the journey of life. They get frustrated because the oil is not fresh. The oil has evaporated. The oil has disappeared. Somebody will tell me, oh, when I used to, I used to pray three hours non-stop. It's not about when you use. Do you have a fresh oil upon your life? It's not about yesterday. Paul said, this thing, with this thing I do, I forget about the things that happened yesterday. Whether they are good, whether they are bad, whether it's good, no. I'm focusing on the now. Hallelujah. On the now. God can still use you. God can still change you. can use you more in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I want us to stand up. We are not, I'm not here to preach. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not here to preach. I'm here for the empowerment, for the cleansing, for the Spirit of God to pour Himself, O Lord, upon us. In the name of Jesus. La praise Ketonia. Le bros Ketoni bros Kata. La bros Ketoni bros Shaka. The Bible says in the book of Joel, Joel chapter 2, Le bros Ketoni bros Katonia. I want to pour out my spirit. Scriptures, and we're going to pray for sanctification. 
The Bible says, It shall come to pass after long that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Hallelujah. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dream, and your young men shall see vision. Hallelujah. He said, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in heaven. I will show wonders in heaven. God wants to show wonders through you. I want you to begin to pray, Lord, sanctify me. Lord, sanctify me. Lord, sanctify me. Every contamination in my spiritual life, Lord, let it be flushed away in the name of Jesus. If anyone, if anyone, it doesn't matter if you are a bishop and you don't place yourself there. Anointing will not flow. You may be a pastor if you don't clean yourself. Anointing will not flow. But if anyone, you might be an usher, you might just be a church goer and cleanse yourself. The anointing will flow. Let them begin to pray for sanctification. Lord, let your fire begin to watch my system. Hallelujah. Yerabushantari Bushanya. 